Hey guys, Mike here. I'm excited to talk to you today about this topic of exercise for longevity. So I'm really passionate about this. I mean, both on the exercise and longevity side, but I've got some cool things I'm gonna share with you today. I've got some notes because I've got a lot of statistics, research, experts in the industry, and kind of want to put it all together for you so that you can understand some practicals of what it might look like for exercise for longevity. So a little bit of my background, I've always been interested in you know working out. I've always been very active. I played sports growing up. So that's always been of interest. And actually in starting in this industry, um, one of the first things I started studying was holistic sports nutrition. So, um, and I, you know, one quote I've said even to this day um, is, Regular exercise is more powerful than any supplement you can take, and I still believe that today. It's one of the most powerful things that you can do for your overall health. But then specifically, I wanted to talk about that related to longevity. So it is a little bit different, right, than training for a specific sport or to be you know, the best at something particular. You know, we're more talking about the balance and, and what that looks like to optimize longevity, because I think we all want to you know, be healthy into our older years and be able to do the types of things we want. So, um, you know, and we, we all know that exercise is important, right? But I, I don't think a lot of people realize just how powerful a tool exercise is. And God designed our bodies to, to move, to be active. We're, we're very much designed to, to move. And so many of us just are not active enough in today's world. You know, and they're now showing studies that are saying that sitting is the new smoking. Because if you're sitting for too long and inactive for too long, it can have such negative effects on your health. Again, we're meant to be moving. We're meant to be outside. We're, you know, so exercise is, is incredibly important. A couple of quotes I wanted to share by Hippocrates, who's known as the father of modern medicine, related to exercise. And, you know, a lot of this, this has been a long time ago he shared these, but still applies today. So regular physical exercise. Oh, sorry, that's my quote I said. Hippocrates said that which is used develops and that which is not wastes away. If there is any deficiency in exercise, the body becomes liable to, di to disease, defective in growth and ages quickly. So I don't think any of us want that. We don't want to age quickly. And, and uh, so many things I could talk about in the deep dive of what exercise does, but I'm going to get more practical and bigger picture um, with this. Another one of Hippocrates' quote says, if we could give every individual the right amount of nourishment and exercise, not too little and not too much, we would have found the safest way to health. So yeah, obviously he knew way back then and we're coming out with more and more research to prove just how powerful exercise is for a variety of disease and just optimal health and all that kind of stuff. But I want to jump into a study that I came across, and I've looked at a lot of studies, and a lot of them have similar information. But this one just happens to be a big study. It's very credible. It was put out by uh, the AMA, American Medical Association. They conducted a study of over 116,000 adults, and this spanned over uh, a period of 30 years, and it showed profound impacts on exercise and longevity. So participants who performed... Um, 300 to 599 minutes of, this is moderate physical exercise, so that's the equivalent of five to 10 hours a week of moderate physical exercise, they had a 26 to 31% lower risk of all-cause mortality. So if you haven't heard of all-cause mortality, that just means from all things. Um, but then they got a little bit more specific too, so specifically related to risk of dying of cardiovascular disease, which is the number one killer in America, it was a it was a 28 to 38 percent reduction in um, death related to those cardiovascular events. So that was related to moderate physical exercise. So additionally, they also studied people and and found that those that performed 150 to 299 minutes of visit vigorous. So now we're talking about vigorous physical exercise per week. That's the equivalent of two and a half to five hours a week of this vigorous exercise were found to have a 21 to 23 percent lower risk of all-cause mortality and a 27 to 33 percent lower risk of cardiovascular mortality. So obviously those are those are huge numbers and then they said really you know when they looked at the combination and this is really the the you know where we're starting to kind of put all this together a combination of this medium uh, moderate exercise and vigorous exercise if you can combine that together and 
um, that's really where you're gonna get the biggest benefit. So what that looks like is, you know, vigorous exercise, you combine about 75 to 300 minutes per week and moderate exercise of 150 to 600 minutes per week. This is where you can get the max reduction that they found in, um, in mortality. And so that combination together is about 35 to 42%. So significant, that's incredibly statistically significant and important, you know, related to a long study, a lot of participants, and that's important. You can find a lot of studies that have information, you know, and they, they studied 16, 20, 30, 100 people for a short period of time. But, you know, to, to find really credible studies, you need to be looking at these that have been done on a lot of people over a long period of time. That's really where you're going to get the best overall data. So, so that's that kind of information. And then I want to share some information I came across from Dr. Peter, Peter Atia. So Dr. Peter Atia is an expert on longevity. That's what he does. He's been doing this for a long time. He's an expert on this topic. And he breaks down exercise related to longevity even more specific. And so again, I've come across a lot of research. I'm kind of bringing you the main ones and the compilation of the best things that I've found. He recommends having a mix of four different types of exercise. So I'm going to break these down for you. But one, strength training. Two, zone two training. Number three, zone five training. And if you're not familiar with what that means, you know, a lot of people that are personal trainers and in that, you know, in that industry, they, they kind of know what that means. It's a, it's a level of intensity of exercise. I'll get more specific with that and give you practicals of what that looks like. But then the fourth thing is stability training. So he talks about having these four as your pillars of exercise, and he would actually say, and I think I would probably agree, this would get kind of controversial, but that exercise is actually even more important for health and longevity than even our diet. Um, and again, probably a lot of people are shocked when they first hear that, and I'm not saying that's 100% true, but that's how powerful exercise is. And of course, like we try to teach people on all levels, body, soul, spirit, you know, eat good, have good lifestyle, exercise, but that's just to kind of maybe put in perspective based on research and a lot of people in this industry, how powerful exercise is for health and longevity. So breaking this down, so strength, the first pillar. So obviously as we age, we lose strength. This is actually a big, a big thing um, that, that hinders people in older age. Um, they're not able to do the things that they need to do on a daily basis and that, that really limits them. So we all wanna you know, live a long time, but we wanna make sure that we're um, you know, functional, that we're able to do the things we want. I, I wanna be able to pick up my grandchildren or great grandchildren when I'm 80, 90, 100 years if, if, if I can live that long, and that's the goal, uh, but be able to go on walks and, um, you know, and, and like Dr. Peter Utia even talks about like walking a dog, like you don't realize that seems like a very simple movement today, but when you're older and aging, you've lost a lot of strength. That's actually a very complex thing to hold on and, and stabilize while you're walking a dog. But yeah, I want to be able to do all those kinds of things, throw a football with my kids and grandkids and stuff like that. So, um, strength is very important. And again, we naturally lose strength over time, but there's a lot you could do to, to slow that down and to make sure you have a good base. It's not about being the strongest you can be, but building a good base of strength is very important. So um, that's, that's pillar number one. But this is, this, is, uh, this is talking about like weight bearing exercises, resistance training. So yes, you could go to the gym and lift weights. Uh, it could also be body weight stuff too. But you need to be doing, you know, for it to be truly strength training, you don't want just some light movement. If you could do, you know, 100 squats, that's, that's not really going to build a lot of strength. You need to be doing something where you're, you're pushing your ability and you can really only do about 6 to 10 repetitions at that strength and that's all you can do. That's really the zone that's, that's going to really build your strength. So again, could be body weight if, you're, if you find that zone or weight bearing of some sort, whether it's, you know, static weights or uh, bands or anything like that. Then zone two, and at the end, like I said, I'm gonna break down more specifics how much, because it's, it's different for each one of these. But zone two training. So there's five zones of training, you know, lowest to highest, one to five. Um, so, it, and this, is, this intensity, it relates to the intensity. And really, when you get more specific, it's about like a percentage of your max heart rate. So this is different for everybody. I think some people want like an exact number, like, oh, it's exactly your heart rate between this level. It's not exactly that simple because it really relates to each individual person and what their max heart rate is. But zone two would be considered ideally 60 to 70% of your max heart rate. 
um, to maybe give you some practical tips on what that looks like because you may not know exactly. You could find tools online to help you figure out what your max heart rate is and stuff like that. But in doing zone two training, you should be able to hold a conversation without pausing, you know, a normal conversation. If you happen to notice yourself starting to take deeper breaths, to stop and pause, and you can no longer breathe for distance through your nose, you're likely transitioning into zone three, and that's not the zone that we're talking about. So zone two, you know, it's, it's, it's not super intense, but it's meant to provide a good base of, um, you know, um, endurance and it's a, it's a great base for a lot of things that you could build on. So you don't want to go too intense in that zone. This could be, so more practical things, this could be on a stationary bicycle. This could be on a treadmill. So for example, like on a treadmill, I would just put it a little bit at an incline, maybe uh, 10 to 15 degrees. You're walking at a brisk pace. That would probably get you in that range, again, depending on the person. Or on a stationary bike. Stationary bike's nice because you can see the wattage and you can kind of find your range and then kind of stick to that and then you can just kind of ride it out for a while. Some people like like a rowing machine, that could be fine too, or just simply going for a walk. It's, it's a little hard to be as precise if you're just going for a walk. Or I find even a rowing machine. I'm a big fan of a rowing machine, but um, again, each time you row, it, it's gonna be slightly different and you could more easily jump around in those zones. So I like something more consistent like a stationary bike or a treadmill. Um, so then zone five. So zone five is the most intense. This is high intensity. So um, this would be 90 to 100% of your max heart rate. So this is kind of like going all out or close to it. Um, and you don't have to do zone five for like a long period of time uh, or yeah, for, for very long to have the, the, the benefits. But it is important. A lot of people kind of steer away from this really high intensity, but it's actually got profound effects that it can have. But again, you don't, you just need short bursts of this and it can have an amazing benefits in this, this kind of protocol. So that could look like one of my favorite exercise for this is just sprinting. Like we all know how to run, right? I don't care how long it's been since you've run last or sprinted, you know how to do it. Um, you just have to do it. And but sprinting is like a full body exercise. And, and if you start just sprinting all out for uh, for a short period of time, it's gonna get you in that range and it's gonna be an amazing exercise that everybody can do. You could also do this on a stationary bike, you could also do this on a treadmill, a little maybe more dangerous on a treadmill because you're really cranking it up, you know, really fast, but, um, or something else, an assault bike, uh, you know, a rower, those would be fine. But generally these are, these are short intervals where you're maybe doing 30 to 60 seconds at that 90 to 100% intensity, and then maybe you're resting for one to three minutes, and then you're doing another cycle of it. And depending on your level of physicality would determine how many of those cycles. I'll get more details at the end as far as like, again, the, the last practical steps for us. So if you're just wanting all the practicals, go to the end of this video, and I will share that. The last pillar is stability. So stability is, is really important. Obviously, if you as we're aging too, it's, it's not just about uh, static strength, but also stability, you know, and what limits a lot of people as you age to have proper balance and uh, coordination and, and that kind of stuff. So your stabilizer muscles are smaller muscles and you need to be intentional about, about working them. And this can, can be extremely preventative in the long run. So, um, but this is, this is good for balance, posture, for coordination. You know, I like stuff like, like Pilates would be really great or um, other core exercises or balance exercises, balancing exercises that force those stabilizer muscles to function and, and make sure we're not deconditioning them over time. So those are the pillars. So let's kind of break it down in the full uh, practicality of how much, what that looks like ideally. Um, so for strength training, I would say in an ideal world, and again, from what Peter Atiyah is saying and, and putting all this research together is where I'm kind of putting this all summation here. So three to four bouts of strength training per week. And ideally that would be probably 30 to 60 minutes a session. Um, and again, some of these things I'm gonna share, this is kind of an ideal place you wanna be. If you're just starting out working out, you know, you wanna start lower and make sure that you can develop a good base and then slowly get to. But eventually where we want to ideally be and for the best benefit is this, this kind of range that I'm talking about. But again, you might not, not everybody might be ready to jump right into this. But three to four bouts of strength training per week for 30 to 60 minutes. Zone two training. So another three to four bouts 
of zone two training per week at 30 to 60 minutes. Uh, those can also be done on the same day. So you don't have to look at it being super overwhelming. Some of these things can be combined on the same day. As far as zone five training, again, the frequency can be less, maybe one to two bouts a week. And as far as like how long, um, 10 to 25 minutes as far as overall. Now you're not gonna be at that 90 to 100% intensity for that long. There are these short bursts. So like I said, 30 to 60 seconds of that 90 to 100%, and then um, down to a, a, a lower, you know, a low intensity for one to three minutes, and then you're kind of recovering, and then you can do another set of that 90 to 100%. So generally what I like to do is just a little bit of warm up for a couple minutes, then hit the, hit the high intensity, again, 30 seconds to a minute. And I might do, you know, I might, I might do five or seven sets of that. Um, if you're just starting out, you know, just even doing two or three high intensity pushes for, for 30 seconds to a minute, that, that might be a lot for you. You might be wiped out after that. But as you start building up, um, you could do more and you could end up doing 10 or 15 sets and that's where it could be longer if you're doing the rest in between and all that. So, um, so that, that's kind of what that looks like. But 10 to 25 minutes would be kind of my average one to two times a week. And then stability work, you can kind of mix in and I prefer to mix in stability work every time I'm working out. So just a small amount of it. So, you know, if you're doing your zone two or you're doing your strength training, maybe at the end of it, I like to do a little bit of stability training, a little bit of core, a little bit of, you know, balancing type stuff. Um, and then maybe one time a week where you do an actual intentional longer session, a 45 minute to an hour of Pilates or, um, you know, deeper core work or balance work, something like that. But again, you can mix in stability every time you're working out. And that's, that's really, I find the best way to do it. So that's kind of the general framework that I've come up with, putting this all together. I also want to mention, if you play sports, you know, like I like to play sports, I like to play, you know, pickleball, um, sometimes ultimate frisbee, soccer, you know, whatever, that kind of stuff, that can take the place of some of this stuff, but not everybody is playing sports. And depending on the sport you're playing, it would, would, would determine what, where that fits in. You know, if you're doing some really intense sports, that might take the place of some of that zone five and, and, and maybe even some of the zone two training, just depending on what that sport is. But if you're playing sports, that can take the place of, of some of this stuff, but uh, you would still wanna do some other intentional things on top of that. So that's a great framework. And again, this is for longevity. This is for, for building um, a good balance long-term so that we're healthy, so that we're functional into our older years. Um, I love when I was, when I've been studying health, I've studied uh, some different books and people that have traveled around the world and found different cultures that have lived, you know, they're, they're still regularly living into their hundreds with almost zero incidence of heart, heart disease, cancer. And these guys are, are being very active into their nineties, hundreds, and just simply dying of old age. So there are still cultures out there that exist like that and taking keys from them. Exercise is a big one. You know, there's, cultures up in the Himalayan mountains like, um, like the Hunzas and, um, and different places like that where these, these guys into their 90s and hundreds are climbing up the mountain, carrying stuff and um, it's, it's amazing. So I hope to be that, you know, and, and um, where we're able to be active and functional and taking care of ourselves into old age. So, so really that's it for today, for today's video. If you enjoyed this, make sure to like and subscribe to us. We're always gonna continue to bring you the latest health information on health and the newest latest research on how you can you know be healthy and learn more about all these facets we know health is complicated uh, there's a lot of things to it so that's why we're here to kind of bring you the the keys and the tips so look forward to talking to you next time mm -hmm.